we had the plan where we were going to go see this at midnight and then we were going to go to steak and shake afterwards go to your house play basketball stay up all night wake up and go to our last day of class where that was a half day and be like Woo, we're out forever so <laughs> that's such a bad idea it, i know it's <laughs> uh, but hey yeah. we made it um So when we talked about doing uh, Luca, you, like it was Krista, your sister was kind of like, are you guys going to do kids movies? And we're like, yeah, we're going yeah. to do all kinds of movies. Of course. Not that, you know, a lot of Pixar and Disney movies, they, they say they're, you know, kid movies, but I think a lot of it, you know, you got adult stuff, not right. like adult stuff, but adult <laughs> stuff. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. That's what keeps you coming yeah. back. That adult exactly. stuff. Uh, <laughs> Ebs, what's up, buddy? Not much cash. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good, man. What have you been up to? Uh, you know, just uh, just hanging out, um, working, doing all that stuff. Um, had to make sure I, I, so I got a, you know, a Prime Day was last week. So I decided to get a Shark brand Roomba thing. It's not a Roomba because that's name <laughs> brand, but I got a Shark uh, vacuum cleaner that goes around and picks up all the stuff. And, uh, you know, Frankie isn't a fan of it but she doesn't hate it she just kind of moves around her and she just kind of moves like being a chill dog that she is but there was a point where she was laying down it came up and bumped her and she just started sprinting away so i think now she's afraid of it um <laughs> but i but i had that going this morning i was like oh i gotta do this i can't have that going because it'll be like bumping into the walls and open this door behind me and it's like i don't need that today no so it's good. Well, I'm glad you clarified that Frankie's your dog, that she's a chill dog, because you didn't at first. I was like, are people going to think like he has like a daughter or somebody who's like afraid yeah. of a vacuum in the. <laughs> you know, kids, kids are stupid sometimes. They're afraid of weird things. Yeah. But but yeah, it's a uh, man. And, I, you know, being in, in housekeeping and everything like that, you'd think that I sweep a lot more than I do. But after the first round, oh, my God, I do not clean my apartment well enough for this. Hey, you don't want to so, bring your your work home with you. That's annoying. That's what I always say. That's why yeah. I don't clean a lot. That's why in high school, I didn't cut grass at my parents' house because I was like, worked landscaping. I was like, I don't bring my work home with me. My dad didn't like that. <laughs> nope. I didn't like that joke the first time I heard it, son. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right, dude, we got a couple of reviews to knock out. We uh, we got Luca uh, coming up first, yes. and then we'll have uh, Fast 9, <laughs> the ninth movie in the Fast and the Furious series. Uh, Which we'll is technically that. the 10th because they had uh, Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. True. Who so. are not in this one. Uh, and Correct. I, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll talk I did about some, that. We, I did some research and I'm confused on some things. But uh, yeah, we're going to do uh, Luca. Yeah. Uh, Pixar. Um, I was kind of excited for this one. Um, you know, Pixar rarely puts out any... Uh, almost never puts out any bad products. I mean, they're all yeah. fairly good. Um, I say that to say I was a little disappointed in Luca. Um, mm -hmm. It's almost to the point where I wonder if Pixar is kind of like the Marvel Cinematic Universe where like everything we do is amazing. So it doesn't matter what we put out. We're just going to yeah. poop out a movie. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. This one I wasn't too enthralled with. I thought it was visually a very beautiful movie uh, you know the yes. seascapes versus the landscapes and the you know it's really blue and orange in certain spots you know with the sun and, and, and yeah. the water uh but that said the the story was was pretty weak you know yeah. uh if you're gonna have an original story you know this little boy is a is a sea monster that lives under the you know in the ocean under the sea yeah uh but the, it's such a retread of the Little Mermaid. It's kind of a little Finding Nemo, you know, the parents mm -hmm. finding him or whatever. Essentially, this little boy is a sea monster, and he wants to go to the surface. And he wants to go to this world where his parents have forbidden him, you know, kind of like Simba yeah. in the Badlands. Yep. Uh, you, you start to see these other ideas pop up. And now I know there are no original ideas in movies, but normally Pixar is able to find something pretty original. Um, yeah. But this one was just, it was a week for me, you know, I, I had a couple of issues with it, you know, uh, the fact that they're sea monsters, um, and he's able to, you know, he meets a friend, Alberto, and mm -hmm. they're able to go to the surface, and they just magically turn into 
a human in, into human form. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah. that's neat. That's really fun how they're able to just do that with no expl Like there's no explanation as to how that happens or why that yeah. happens. <laughs> uh, there's also no explanation of why his parents forbid him to go to the surface. Um, yeah. There's like, it's kind of a bit <clears throat> implied that it's, it's dangerous. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I, I feel like where Pixar has done such a great job in the past of being in depth with character development and story development and, you know, I mean, hell, the first one was inanimate objects. It was toys. Um, yeah. But you had an understanding of that culture and, and that world that they were in. And Luca was kind of, for me, weak. What did you think? Yeah, I, I was saying the same thing. Like, after watching it, I was like, okay, well, you know, it wasn't their their best um, movie that they've ever done. The, the same thing with uh, not having that knowledge that breaking the surface turns them into human. Um, there's a part where Luca goes on, uh, you know, he, he goes into the land and then it's established that being on land turns them human. But at the same time, there's parts where they're like swimming on top of the water and then they turn human. And it's kind of, kind of jumps back and forth between it because it's like, well, a little bit of water gets on them because there's, you know, parts with the rain and like a, a drop of water gets on them and then they turn into sea monster after being human but they're jumping out of the ocean and they're still covered with water but they turn human so just kind of having yeah. that was is kind of took me out of it a little bit it's like well wait if he just came out of the water and still wet then why is he human now even though he poked his head out and you know a tiny little splash of water turns him into sea monster again and i was kind of like wait that's not right <laughs> um, and then i feel like they they kind of rushed the story it wasn't a long movie there's 20 minutes of credits at the end yeah. which was like, cause I was like, man, I, you know, this is almost a two hour movie. And then you watch it like, this is like an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so watching that and like feeling the rush storyline, because, you know, he's, he, at the beginning, he's going around hurting these uh, fish, like a shepherd um, and then finds human stuff. And then he's like 10 minutes later, he's on land. And then he's like, okay, let's do this. And it's like, there's like no build up to it really. Um, and then, there's the race that's a, an Italian triathlon, which I thought was funny, you know, biking, swimming, and then eating pasta instead of running. I was like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> I have something to say about that. We'll, we'll come back to that. Okay. So they, they do that. And then um, it just, I mean, it kind of, like you said, it's a weak storyline. It kind of fell apart a little bit because I feel like they were like, we have this story, but we have this much time and let's just rush it along. So. Yeah. Uh, part of that I think is also the villain sucks. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, people who have, have seen our episodes or seen other episodes of the Cash's Top 5 podcast are going to be really tired of me saying uh, a movie is only as good as its villain, really, mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of the time. And this one sucked. I mean, I'm just going to be yeah. honest. You know, I don't even know the character's name, um, but the, the smarmy... Er, Erneko or something? Ercole, or maybe. Something. Might have been, Ercole, something like that. Ercole, that's what it was. Ercole. Yeah, Ercole. <clears throat> Yeah, he wasn't that threatening. He was just kind of a pipsqueak who had won the triathlon the year before, or in, or maybe for several years. It's not really too clear, but I think it was. I think they said six years in a row, and he was sixteen. So it was like he was a sixteen-year-old kid. Yeah, it's older, pretty, older pretty kind of bully. Uh, but one of the issues I had with the movie, and I honestly don't, I don't know, I'm not mad at it. I, I just think it's kind of funny. Is this? I mean, is it racist against Italians? This movie. I mean, did you I, get kind of a disrespect? Like they're 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 doing a, an Italian uh, triathlon where one of the stages of the contest is, is eating a bowl eating of pasta. pasta. Okay, <laughs> kind of uh, it kind of felt that way. Yes, there's older grandmas at like uh, hanging out the window. Hey, uh, why don't they be kicking a soccer ball? Uh, you know, there's in the the whole prize. The, they want to win this triathlon so that they can win a Vespa because a Vespa yeah. is going to take them around the world because, you know, obviously Vespas are popular in Italy, but like, yeah, this is kind of racist against Italians, man. Like it's kind of yeah. weird. It's, it kind of is, but I did, I did a little bit of research and I guess the guy who directed it's his directorial debut. Um, and he actually is from, uh, do you remember the, the town that she goes to, um, where her mother lives and goes to school there. I can't remember it. Genoa, Geneva. Genoa, I think, Genoa. or something. So I think the director is actually from there. And so a lot of it, it's like his life and experience growing up. Like he was a shy kid and he had a friend who pulled him to do all this stuff. Um, so it's like he's Italian because he grew up in this town. So 
all right well uh, that's cool but it still it, came across as like uh, like kind of yeah it, it's just stereotype after stereotype after stereotype you know mm-hmm. um but like, when oh my you gosh. when you mentioned that luca his normal job as when he's the sea monster uh as he's shepherding the the little fish the baby fish so that they don't get caught in yeah. you know the fisherman nets or whatever and they ba like they're <laughs> sheep I'm like, these are fish. I mean, I get the yeah. point that they're making. It reminded me of Good Burger, Kel Mitchell. Like, oh, yeah. You're a chicken. Moo. Moo. <laughs> these yeah, fish like, are okay. like, bah, bah. like, it's a fish. It's a I fish. Get like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, there were then, some good parts, though. Uh, there were some funny say, parts. To build on that, you had, oh, they were like, just real quick, they had, um, you know, they were very protective of these fish. Like, you can't shouldn't do this, shouldn't do this. I need to protect the fish. And then halfway through when they're helping um, Juliana or Julia's mom or dad, I mean, and they're fishing yeah. and he's like, yeah, they're all over here. And they like kill all the fish. It's like, oh, okay. Well, that kind of <laughs> is counterintuitive as well that you just did yeah. that, but okay. But anyway, the funny parts, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, there were some funny parts. The grandma, uh, Luca's grandma, I think was the best character. Well, there's a tie for best character uh okay for me the be- it's okay his grandma who by the way do you know who voiced grandma uh max mom from it's always sunny and she's also the grandma in napoleon dynamite make yes. yourself a dang quesadilla i don't know her name unfortunately but she was great sandy martin is a treasure sandy martin okay and she is hilarious yeah. she has a few just a few lines uh i won't ruin it but she kind of shows up at the end and she's just like yeah i'm here every week like it's just a, it's a funny <laughs> yeah. delivery of, of that moment that they're in uh, and yeah. then the cat. The cat is stole the show for me uh, because when Luca and Alberto are on land, of course, they are in their human form, but you can tell yep. like, the villain says he's, they smell like fish. They smell bad. Like mm-hmm. there are, are fish characteristics from their sea monster yeah. DNA and the cat like knows it. And so it's like <laughs> just stares at him and it, <laughs> like he'll pounce attack out of nowhere and claw their face. Yeah. Uh, that I enjoyed quite a bit. Yeah, I also like to throw in um, the uncle from the the deep sea, played by Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah, he comes up and he's it, like, yeah. yeah, he's like the the pressure up here is is really bad from, and then he like you got to punch him in the heart, and so it, like wakes up, <laughs> and then also did you did you watch yeah. did you watch halfway through the credits or like at the end of the credits? Yeah. Um, so then he's one of the, the I can't remember the the sheep fish name, but he's you know the one that always tries to go off and. Exp- and he's down in, in the uh, the super deep depths with uh, Sasha Barinker and he's like just sitting there like staring at him he's like you come here right to the right place my friend I don't know why and just and, you know the whale chunks that float into his mouth and it's just like even if you don't want them to they just float into your mouth and it's like oh my gosh like that's I was like that sounds like Sasha Baron Cohen and then boom Sasha Baron Cohen so yeah uh, but, so yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to dump on the movie too much um, again I I I don't want to say we're not the target audience, you know, we're not mm-hmm. kids, but at the same time, Pixar is kind of for supposed to be for everyone. You know, we kind of talked yeah. about that during the Cruella review. Uh, yeah. Disney slash Pixar is usually fun for the whole family. There's something for, to enjoy. Um, didn't love the story. There were a couple of really good moments, like we said. Um, yeah. The, when Luca gets back to the bed, uh, to the house, he's in bed and grandma's asleep, but she apparently just like sleeps with her eyes open. Yeah. That made me, she's like... <laughs> um anyway uh i i give it a thumbs up you know yeah it's not bad enough or boring enough to get a thumbs down i mean there are some some cool scenes it it, it is what it is i'll give it two stars though yeah i was gonna say i i think i'd rate it the same like um it's it's not pixar's greatest um movie out there but it's not the worst i feel like um Cars 3 is probably the worst. So. I was going to say, Cars 3 and, and Luis Luca are probably the well, worst. Weirdly enough, there was a producer on here that it was like from the, the creators of Cars 3. So that's what made me think of it. And I was like, I don't know if this is going to be good. And it was okay. It wasn't good, but it wasn't okay. It wasn't bad. But yeah, I'd give it uh, two stars, one thumbs up. So <laughs> nice. it's, it's, in, it's you know entertaining, but not as entertaining, I don't think, as our next film, which we'll get to. <laughs> Yeah, so let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, the other movie we're going to review, Fast 9, uh, Fast and the Furious franchise, which, again, we, you've seen the first one, and now I have seen the first one. 
okay. uh, I went ahead so and watched it, it after I saw the, uh, I, I saw Fast Nine in the theater having seen none of them. I know very little yeah. of the franchise other than what is you know I live life one quarter mile at a time. It's about fame. Yep. Ludacris is there. That's my understanding of of Fast and the Furious. Um, and the best part so about this be, movie, you'll be able to confirm something for me later when I talk about it. So since okay. you just saw Fast One, but go ahead. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, this was one of those movies. I mean, this is like the big summer blockbuster. I mean, this reminded me of one, like if we were 17 again, mm-hmm. like we would have gone at midnight to the premiere showing. Yeah. Uh, you know, like this we've is done kind of multiple times before. Like yeah, we used to, I mean, I always remember uh, we go see the Pirates of the Caribbean at midnight. The Harry yes. Potter movies would come out. We'd go at midnight. Uh, yep. Do you remember? And, do you remember when we saw Pirates? I think it was the third one, that World's End, and the power went out. <laughs> okay, so you know how much I I still love these movies. Don't get me wrong; just the first three, the others are. But okay, so we went, and I think it was the last day of high school. I'm not joking. I think it was literally the last day of high school. And we had like, just graduated. Yeah, well, we were graduating the next day. Remember? Because oh, was that we were what like, it was? We I know it was like right it. there. Yeah, we had the plan where we were going to go see this at midnight, and then we were going to go to Steak and Shake afterwards, go to your house, play basketball, stay up all night, wake up and go to our last day of class that was a half day and be like, woo, we're out forever. So. <laughs> That's such a bad idea. It's, I know. It's, <laughs> uh, but hey, yeah. we made it. Um, but the, yeah. I remember there were storms, and we get there to the midnight premiere, and then literally the entire block, the grid of whatever, power goes out because of the storm or whatever so emergency lights come on i think we hung around for a minute to see if it would come back on and then they came over and they're like they're like hey you got to get out of here we hung storms. around for a long time and what made it so great is the theater was packed now i know people have gone to a theater and it's been a full theater for a popular movie or whatever but this felt different like there were yeah tons of friends groups like we knew people over there we knew people over there we were, mm-hmm. you know, had a big crew with us to watch in the back row yeah and like this was the first time <clears throat> I mean, one of the only times i feel like where the whole audience was like in it together like we are so keyed up for like oh pirates this is like the culmination of the of the trilogy this is gonna be yep. awesome and then <laughs> the lights go out the emergencies come on and we hang around forever waiting yep. for this uh to come up now do you remember so we saw that was the third one the second one uh yeah uh i think it was as dead man's AMC. chest oh yeah 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 Yeah, pirates of the caribbean dead man's chest now i hadn't seen the first one but everybody That's was so right. excited yeah. to see the second one i was like well i'll go it's a pirates movie or whatever yeah now, jeffrey rush's character barbosa is the main character in the first one and he dies at the end of that movie yes which I don't mind spoiling it. That came out in 03. Watch it. Was it 03? Oh man, that's a long time ago. Yeah. So 06, the second one comes out, Dead Man's Chest. And we go and I'm watching the movie. I'm like, oh, this is great. This is cool. And then at the end, when Barbosa comes down the stairs and bites the apple and the whole audience, like, including you go, oh my God. Oh, and I'm like, it's Barbosa. What? Who's that guy? <laughs> so I should have learned my lesson not to watch Out of Order in a yeah. series but that's exactly what we did with fast nine yes um, oh my gosh which i had seen i'll let you start i started with luca uh how do you feel bud what do you think about so, fast nine? <laughs> oh my god I, I okay so not to give away too much but i mm. think this this go ahead and spoil it perfect. nobody cares they're gonna watch so, it it's dumb there's a line in this movie that ludicrous says love ludicrous. No, this is the best line of the this, whole movie the, yeah the, that explains nothing and explains like it's so frustrating about like all these movies but he says if you just trust the physics it'll all work out that's <laughs> is that the one you're thinking of the line yeah like, he's, no it, it's the second part of that it's that scene that you're talking about yeah. where he goes we gotta obey the laws of physics man like yeah <laughs> the second part i forgot about that movie like, they just haven't. not base anything on physics. And I was like, I saw that. And I was like, when, when, when? Because, uh-huh. I, okay, so this was, don't get me wrong. I, I didn't love the movie, but this was a really fun movie. And I can yeah. see why they've gone on so many times. It's just, you know, had I not, had we not talked about doing this for the podcast, I don't know if I would have saw it, but 
it, I had fun. Um, and it's just because um, I just was sitting there, like a lot of it just shaking my head, like, what is going on? Like, uh, speaking of spoilers and stuff, it's not really like a spoiler or anything, but when they go over the bridge, they're driving um, cars in, I, I don't know the country, but it's, it's like the rainforest. And then they're like in this plains area and they're driving cars and it's perfectly fine. Um, and then they go across, they're, they're driving through a minefield and they have to, they calculate really quickly. It's like, how fast do we have to go to have the mine blow up behind us and not on us? And they're like, 80 miles an hour. And then Tyrese is like, I can only get up to 70. He's like, get going faster. And it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then they're the driving. The contrivances in this yeah. movie is he then gets stuck. And of course, there's a landmine right yeah. below him. I, okay. And he's got to get out of there quickly. And so, yeah. and then Michelle Rodriguez's character, Letty, I believe it is, she's yeah. driving and she's like, I'll be okay on a motorcycle driving over these mines with explosions behind me. It's like your tire would have melted no matter how fast you're going. I feel like it would have still like blown up and then you'd be like, Oh, I'm dead. Or something would have caught fire. <laughs> and then the amount of, <laughs> the amount of car catches that they're just like catch. It's like, okay. And you landed on uh -huh. this hood going 60 miles an hour and you're fine. Okay, cool. Um, Cause that happens a couple of times in the movie. But the part I was getting to is when they're at the bridge and, and Letty's like, how are we going to get over the bridge? And he's like, I've got an idea. And he like, somehow, one in a billion shot, gets the rope wrapped around the wheel to where he tar Tarzan swings the car over the ravine and then lands on this other side, kind of a little bumped up. And then very next scene, he's driving the same car and there's like no damage to it. So I guess it's a long flight on that, that big plane that they carry everything in. And they're just like, I've got to buff out these scratches so it'll look good in the next scene. <laughs> or I got to work on this axle because I just had uh, giant ropes wrapped around it and, and swung around like Tarzan. So it was fun, but oh man, it was, it didn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> but I, like I said, I enjoyed it. Yeah. After what, so <clears throat> as I walked out of the theater, I realized that might be unintentionally the funniest movie I've ever seen. Because yeah. I laughed out loud several times at yeah. how dumb it was. And I, <clears throat> my sister, Melinda, you know her, she is a yeah. huge fan of the series. Yes. And just recently too, right? Because she watched them all in order and, and did it that way. So yeah, she has a podcast, uh, the cast and the curious, you know, the yeah. cast and the furious. And she was just like, I'm going to watch them. I've never seen any of them. And so they want her and her friend, Andrew, watch a movie and then review it and talk about yeah. it. And so they did the whole Fast series and then they realized how much they love Vin Diesel. <clears throat> so then they just did all of Vin Diesel's movies, which is great. Um, the vibe I get from her is that it's supposed to be dumb fun. It's supposed yeah. to be, because this movie is so self-referential. You can tell with the way they introduce characters. Like there was way too many times where somebody comes from around the corner and like, oh, it's that guy. Like he's been dead yeah. since the sixth one and she's been gone since the eighth. <clears throat> like, yeah, there was a and lot of like, that. Okay, and that's what made it so easy to follow because I was like, I'm not going to know anything uh, about these. I know, I know, I know a little bit. You know, cars yeah. and, and Vin Diesel and a little bit. Yeah, but the ex the dialogue is so bad in this movie that it explains everything for you. Like, yeah, they they just like exposition right here. You do this exposition, and it's like, okay. yeah, the characters tell you the story, like she's the woman who killed your wife. You're going to do that. Like, Oh, so that's, she, like you're able to, that's, that's how that happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if the point of it is to be so over the top and just dumb fun, then I'm on board. You know, yeah. I thought it was really, so the part I laughed out loud the hardest is when Ludacris says, we got to obey the laws of physics, man. That, yeah. And then when they go to space, when they want, they put a rocket engine on a Pontiac on a Fiero, Fiero, and oh they my God. launch into space. They drive the car into a satellite, creating this huge, you know, explosion, and yep. then are then able to get back to Earth. So, I, I don't know. I, if so, you're able to just disconnect and disengage from all reality and just enjoy it, it was a lot of fun. But it's also yeah. the dumbest movie I've ever seen. Yep. And speaking of space, like, <clears throat> you know, we've all taken science classes and, and when you're driving, it's an X, Y axis. So you have a steering wheel that goes left and right. So you can uh -huh. go around that. To have a Fiero with a steering wheel in a three-dimensional 
realm. Mm -hmm. I know there's like boosts mm -hmm. and stuff that were like pushing them because they did kind of show it on the outside. <laughs> but like when you have a steering wheel, they're like, we're gonna crash in that satellite. And it's like, what if it's up there? You're gonna be like, it just doesn't, it's like, okay. There's, they didn't have any indication of how they're steering like in a 3D realm, just on a two dimensional plane. So. Um, that and then the the magnets at the end, how they utilize what the bad guys are using with magnets, and then yeah, um, you know, turning on polarity, um, whether it be repulsing or attracting, you're not gonna attract what you want because at the end when they're, which leads me to another part that's just I was just like this is so stupid but so good, um, <laughs> when they're like the cops are chasing them when they're chasing that giant train tank or whatever and they're like we got to pull the wires down and then they turn it on and just the wires come down and it's like what you can't just pick and choose what you want to attract and it's not like it would be everything else in that area but the other part they use the magnets and the cars with a wrestler John Cena to suplex a giant tank thing they got it and then they. <gasps> and then do the, the <laughs> slam and I'm like oh my god they suplexed a tank <laughs> and I was like that is other than space that was like the dumbest but greatest part I was just like I, I, well, I'm okay with that so <laughs> it's interesting that you noticed that because I didn't think of John Cena when I saw when they did that I thought of yeah. oh Charlize Theron is in this movie so we're gonna take this tanker out the way we do in Mad Max Fury Road. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, that makes sense. Which leads me to a, a segment I would like to introduce. This is the first time we're gonna do this, and I'm hoping it's not the last. Okay. Uh, what are you doing here? That's the name of the segment, and we have several for this movie. Charlize, I know where Theron. you're going with this. Oh, Char okay. Charlize Theron. I just mentioned her Oscar-winning actress, amazing yeah. actress. What are you doing here? Like. <laughs> Come on, like I, I understand that they are were in previous movies. Yeah, uh, some of these actors I'm about to name, so that they come back. Um, yeah, but what are you doing here, Helen Mirren? What are you doing here? What are you doing here, uh, Shea Wiggum, who is more of a deeper cut, but he's a great yeah. actor. Uh, he he was uh, the preacher uh, in the first season of True Detective. Uh, oh yeah, you'll know you'll know him when you know. I know you know him, but if yeah. you don't know who I'm talking about. Shea Wiggum. Uh, just do an IMDb search, do a Google search. You're going to see his face. Be like, oh, that guy. He's in everything, and he's always awesome. Yeah. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I was, so I have one to add to that. Uh, Cardi B. Oh. What are you? What are you doing here? That's not like. A, what are you doing here? Like, what's what led you to this decision? That was why did you? Why were you invited to this? And I asked some of my my friends who have seen all the movies, and I said, was she in previous ones? And this was like a a nod or a wink or something to that. And they're like, nope. She's not that I remember. I don't think she was in any other one. And I'm like, then what was the point of that? Just to, just so, to have her. I mean, she's popular. And, and yeah. you know, that's just a Cardi B. A cool what are you doing have. here? So. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, uh, but it was, I, are we getting to the ratings? Because I can, I think, I mean, honestly, like I'd say thumbs up and three stars because it was fun for me. Like I just, I, it's stupid going into this, like, like so many movies, I feel like, like Cruella, you know, I wanted to hate, but ended up liking it, but I kind of wanted to hate this movie, but it was like, this is, this is dumb fun, like you said, so I say, you know, thumbs up, three stars, like, it was, I had a lot more fun than I should have, I feel like, just, just yeah, being there. I think this is going to be one of those rare thumbs up, one star for me, like, <laughs> uh tarot not good it's a one star maybe half a star uh it's not as bad as hitman's wife's bodyguard because that movie oh was just a uh, yeah uh, but two thumbs up like for sure yeah. go see it it's really stupid yeah um that but and now having because that we we said before you have seen the first one and i just yes. saw the first oh, one yeah yeah uh, afterwards uh i cannot wait now to watch the rest of the series to see Just how they see got how from point out. A to point B uh, of the first yes. one and this ninth one, because wow. Just wow. Good Lord. Yeah. Like I, I, I want to, that makes me actually want to watch this too. Like all the other ones just because of that. And then, so since you just recently watched the first one, I forgot to bring this up, but I know I said something. So at the end, after everything that happened and they're all sitting at the house and having dinner and they're talking to Brian, Vin Diesel's son, not Brian, Paul Walker's character, who is conveniently in hiding a lot of the time during this movie, so they say. Uh -huh. um, but did they, in the first one, do you remember, 
uh, when they're sitting around and they're like, say grace, like you just say what's in your heart. Was that an homage to the first one that like Brian says, like, you know, say grace, he's like, just say what's in your heart. And it's kind of like a callback to that. I think so. Yes. Okay. And it's interesting because again, I hadn't seen the first one before I saw the ninth one. So yeah. when that blue car rolls up and sorry, that might be a huge spoiler, but whatever. Yeah. Um, I thought that was John Cena's character. I thought that was the brother. And I, cause I couldn't remember. I was like, was he at the dinner table? Yeah. Which I don't think he was. Cause he drove off at the end. I think. Wait, Maybe. Right. So I was like, may, so I thought, Oh, that's his brother. That's Jacob yeah. coming back. Yeah. And then I realized, Oh, that's probably Brian. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> which, For that which is funny because spoiler. Well, somebody. Which somebody is funny because the spoilers on the car. <laughs> <gasps> and it was so dumb back in two thousand one when they had those spoilers. You're like, ugh. Mm -hmm. But like, it's it's just funny because you know you see that and like having seen the first one, I kind of was like, oh, I think that was the car he drove because I thought it was green, but I think Ben Diesel drove a green car and he drove a blue car. No, he it was um, uh, Brian's car was green in the first one, uh, but okay. because there are so many movies, he might have a blue one at some point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I was right about that. I was like, that's why I was confused. I was like, because I thought the same yeah. thing. I was like, oh, John Cena or maybe Jason Statham or Dwayne Johnson because they weren't in that. So, yeah. Um, because they went off and did their Hobbs and Shaw, which I guess Vin Diesel and Dwayne Johnson kind of got into it before all this stuff. So. I think yeah. that's why they weren't really necessarily in this movie. But then again, that's part of that research thing. So got to do that after this before I see the other ones. Yeah, man. So yeah, uh, Luca, two stars, thumbs down. Fast nine, one star, but big thumbs up. Yeah. So two or two and up for me and then for Luca and then three stars just because it was so much fun. But then a thumbs up for, for fast nine. Never thought I'd say that, but. But here we are. You just got to uh, trust the physics. <laughs> so dumb. All right. That's a review. Uh, we'll be back next time. Love you, buddy. Love you too, bud.